Hello guys and welcome back to my SimSig simulation introductions and in this video I'm going to look at King's Cross which is one of the larger busier simulations and it's certainly not something for the faint-hearted or for complete beginners uh, but that said you could probably just about manage to operate the entire simulation with one person if you kind of know what you're doing if you've learned where most of the places are most of the stations and junctions and things but you spend a lot of time darting backwards and forwards but the uh, first thing to note is that one of the things that's quite helpful about King's Cross is it's quite a short simulation in terms of its window height which means if you're like me and you end up stretching the window across three monitors or more then what ha what you can do is you can drag the top of this down because it starts by default at this kind of height drag it right down until you see the scroll bar kind of appears and then that means you can leave your messages window nice and big and in the middle so you can spot everything that's happening so this uh, edition of king's cross comes with a 1985 timetable and i've run it from midnight and the first thing just to note when you do that is if you've ticked to seed the train services, which you kind of need to to make sure that all the services are kind of on the board when you first start, then you'll find that it all kind of seems really quiet. And then all of a sudden you'll have 10 seeded services, uh, more or less, all enter at the same time. I think three of those are calling you on the telephone, so it all feels a bit frantic. So what I recommend just for that first couple of minutes is just drag the speed right down so f3 take that down to kind of slow and uh, just to give you time to kind of work out where everything is because uh, unlike some simulations where you can see trains kind of on the main line on king's cross they're seeded in various random sidings some of the sidings that don't actually get used normally during the simulation so you could have trains coming out of all kinds of places so that's just the first thing but by way of introduction we'll just kind of look at the simulation as it lies here so i'm at the right hand end if you like the southern end this is london king's cross station and the whole simulation here which is that wide hopefully that didn't make you seasick it covers around 40 miles of track from king's cross going northbound this actually goes to peterborough signal box but Peterborough Station is about another 30 miles north of here. So this isn't kind of Peterborough Station. This is just Peterborough kind of fringe. And you'll see that there's pretty much four main lines going north to south. That's where obviously most of the traffic is. But then we have the Hartford Loop, which is this bit at the top, which has most of the trains just running to and from Hartford North. But some of them, usually the ones with F in the head code, will go on to Stevenage or sometimes further. <clears throat> and then they might reverse at Stevenage or they might carry on up here towards Hitchin and Letchworth. We then have the branch here to Cambridge. So this actually goes to the Royston simulation, which is just that one screen simulation that we recommend beginners start with. So I think this simulation will actually chain to Royston and to Peterborough as well. And uh, so on the branch here, this is quite a busy junction. So we don't tend to auto the signals across the junction because there's so many conflicting movements here. But there's probably as much traffic on the Cambridge branch as there is on the main line here. So you got a lot of local trains, a lot of services to Royston, often with R in the letter, but also some expresses which go to Cambridge and stuff which will go up the branch here as well so this is actually um, quite busy but if we we might as well start at this end because we're here if we just go through some of the things to watch out for uh, Letchworth carriage sidings has a lot of action particularly in the morning with services obviously coming ECS from Letchworth usually into Letchworth station to become a you know a, a passenger service now notice that a lot of these stations have automatic code insertions so theoretically when that service comes into the platform it should automatically change its head code but just a warning in general across king's cross is that doesn't always happen and i'm not sure why it does sometimes and doesn't sometimes because i've seen at moorgate for instance two trains that are kind of 
pretty much the same. They go in, they terminate. One of them gets its uh, its exit code assigned and one doesn't. So just be mindful of that when you're kind of moving your trains around. Now, the problem with Letchworth is it can get quite confusing. So you've got some services going into the carriage sidings at this end, some coming out of the north end of the carriage sidings to go all the way to Royston. But sometimes you'll have a service coming from the south end, which actually needs to come in Baldock on the up line, which is then going to reverse and go into to Letchworth that way. So be really careful of that. And also the reversing siding is effectively a, a buffered siding with space for probably about eight carriages in there so trains that go into the reverse siding as you can see keep their code assigned and it also has a train ready to start signal there which is very handy for knowing when it should come out unfortunately one of the things i've found with these is you can't always tell what uh, what this service is which platform this service is going to go into so this hasn't actually joined yet it's going to join now uh, if i unpause the simulation it will join but then when you click on the description, it will just say something like, you know, shunt via down platform or something. And in this case, the train that joins actually needs to go into the up platform. I put it into the down platform, then realized I put it on the wrong side. Um, and normally you could possibly shunt it forward into here and then cross over. I'm not sure. But when that actually happens, there's there's actually a train here waiting to reverse into hitching anyway. So very easy in King's Cross, particularly with the ECS movements to screw things up very quickly. And with the sheer volume of services going on, the simulation is not going to wait for you to, to spend 10 minutes fixing something. You'll have an, another 50 trains on the go or wanting you to set routes and, and things like that. So just be mindful of that because, you know, don't beat yourself up if you screw it up. You'll probably have to play it several times before you can kind of understand what's going on. So Letchworth is, is definitely a place to keep an eye on. Hitchin Upyard has a small amount of traffic, not very much, but some of the ECS from Hitchin goes into the Upyard and some services from here either come in from Royston direction directly into the Upyard. Sometimes they come in this direction and reverse at this signal. So in terms of Hitchin, you'll see some signal numbers here, 234, 222. There are only actually two timetable locations that have a signal number written on them so what you'll find is that that position for instance is called Hitchin North Reverse it's not called K232 Reverse so sometimes it's quite confusing to work out uh, where the trains are supposed to go especially when they're going to reverse so there's one move for instance in the morning comes in from Biggleswey direction stops in platform one it actually needs to go to here at which point it will reverse all the way down here, all the way down here to this signal, 711, and then reverse back into platform two. But sometimes it's quite hard to work out. And sometimes you have to kind of click on a train, have a little look at it, try, try and work out. Um, and even if it's just looking at what the next service number is, and then F4 brings up the timetable editor, you could go, oh, it, you know, it becomes service 5R11. What's, you know, what's that one? And if you can tell from this, that that service a starts from Letchworth you might be able to work out where your service has got to go obviously if you want to you can edit the timetable entries for these yourself so if if you kind of thought oh that's not a very good description you could just edit this usually if if it's um, on the simulation you can press f2 get your list of trains up you can see how many there are already at 7 a.m uh, right click one of the services edit the timetable and in here, in the description, you could say, actually, I'm going to change this and call it Hartford North Carriage Sidings to King's Cross or whatever. So you can change that and then save that. And it means next time you play, hopefully you will find the description slightly easier to understand. OK, so down to the main lines here at Hitchin Station, you get quite a lot of notice of trains arriving from Peterborough. You notice here that there are kind of seven blocks um, on the up line before they reach King's Cross signals. Uh, most of these, those two, those two are, are automatic signals anyway. So you kind of got quite a lot of time. Not very much crosses over here. But um, the first thing to note about hitching is that because the platforms are only on the slow lines, there are a good number of class one trains that cross from the fast line into platform one at Hitchin 
and then they often come back out to the fast line at Hitchin, but sometimes a train crosses over here and stays on the slow line, obviously usually due to regulation of traffic. So just be very careful of this. Normally when you click on a train description, obviously you can see it says slow line here at Hitchin. When the class one train like that comes in, that's already left, but that would have, uh, that one there, I was a sleeper, so that came straight through. But yeah, you'll see some of the others, it will say kind of FL, on, you see it has the path column that's going into the station so if it had if that was uh, Stevenage and that said kind of SL FL then you know it needs to go into platform one and then back out again not always the end of the world if you get that wrong uh, you know if you put it onto a slow line by accident okay you're going to lose some time but you know all of the lines are ele electrified south of um, south of Biggles Road anyway so you're not going to have any problems like that obviously you're more going to get in more hot water if you send a train down the loop instead of down the main line those sorts of things but in general what you've got to do is kind of make sure that you're 10 signals ahead of every train. So if you see that service and it appears, you know, on the up fast here at Biggles Road, click on it. What do I need to do? Um, the other thing you'll have to do a lot is say, right, that's due in a hitching at 7.05. That's due in a hitching at, oh, 7.08. OK, so the fast train goes in first. You find yourself doing that a lot. I mean, even on, on the beginner's level, you can have trains running late. So it's possible to get your regulation wrong. And there are a couple of trains that wait somewhere for quite a long time. So there's another service in the morning, goes into platform two, but then it doesn't leave for 20 minutes. And actually, if you set signal two to go um, forwards towards Biggles Wade and you do that too early, I think there's a service wants to come out of the down yard, which then can't come out because obviously the route's blocked by that signal. So then you have to cancel it down. You get your approach lock in and it kind of slows down. So... This is definitely a simulation where you shouldn't be setting uh, really long routes or, or over anticipating too much. Another thing you notice that this is quite a fast set of lines. I think the, the slow lines are 90 here and these are 125 uh, north of Warmer Green. So these are pretty fast lines. But in the 1985 timetable, of course, this is a class 47 and it's a sleeper train. So it's not going to be going 125. It's probably only going to be going 80. So don't assume that just because it's a class one train, it's going to be zipping along and going past all the class two trains. There are plenty of times we'll have a class two train here and a class one train here and the class two train actually goes first into the two track section here. So just be mindful of that. Notice here you've got the junction for the Hartford loop. So the trains that are J tend to go to Hartford. You'll notice that by clicking on them and then eventually you'll work it out. The R trains, confusingly, because R is the Royston trains, R is also the King's Cross trains, usually via um, Welling Garden City. So just be mindful of that. Most of the class two trains will stay on the slow line here. So I tend to leave that autoed most of the time. But obviously when you get to here, it's left for Hartford, straight on for Welling. Uh, nothing much probably to mention there. Uh, there's just a quick note that some of these F trains here, so this one's actually going all the way to Hitchin, but some of them uh, go to Stevenage and then they reverse back down the line they came to signal 938 and then cross back over. So you need to be really careful of that because obviously if you put a, a train into platform four, but then you let another service come up to signal 659, then you've blocked this service in and there's not really very much you're going to be able to do about that. You're probably going to have to make it shunt forwards onto the fast line, but then you're not going to be able to stop it because there's no e-stop on that signal. It's going to go all the way to here and you're going to have to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, be aware of that. If you can see that the service coming in is stopping and reversing at Stevenage, then make sure this signal here is cancelled down and this signal here is cancelled down. Otherwise, yeah, you, you can break things quite easily. So then the next interesting part is Welling Garden City. It looks fairly complicated, but fortunately it's it kind of works fairly well like clockwork. So the slow trains from London, they tend to be a K, like 2K01. They will come up here. Usually they will go into platform four. And then after a period of time, they will usually go southbound over the flyover, back down straight to the slow line, and then they'll stop at all stations going down to King's Cross or Moorgate, depending on if it's a J or a K. 
Uh, that one there is actually going to Moorgate. Uh, sometimes the services here, so the, the 2R kind of series, tend to be, they run fast from Finsbury Park to Potter's Bar, fast to Hatfield, I think. Then they come into Platform 3, go back out, and then they run slow line north of Warmer Green. So it's a, a slightly different than the slow train, but you start to get used to the patterns of them running. Go, OK, that's that's a fast one. It's because it's Royston. They don't want it stopping at every single station here just to then stop at every single station. So they run fast up to Wellin via uh, Potters Bar and Hatfield and then carry on slow line. And, and likewise, some of the services coming down from Royston, they'll come in on a slow line. They're usually signed to go into the slow line at Digswell. So you notice that you could go from here into Platform 2. But for reasons that I don't quite understand, they tend to be um, said at Digwell rather than Welling Garden City. So just to be a good boy, I usually put them through there. And then usually they will go into platform two. And then again, some of them, depending, will go out on the slow line. Some of them, like this one, you can see is then fast line all the way basically past Finsbury Park. So that's another fast one. Um, and... Just note note that a lot of these will change at Potter's Bar. So depending on what services are, are scheduled to come through, you might find a train run slow to Potter's Bar and then fast to Finsbury Park. But you'll also find particularly freight trains might run fast to Potter's Bar and then change over onto the slow line. So if you notice here, that one actually goes onto the fast line at Potter's Bar. And the best way to deal with that, because there aren't hundreds of trains at the moment, is popping the cancelling the route here, popping the auto button in the process, because you don't want a train to get here, stop at a green light, tell you it's got the wrong route set uh, and make you cancel the signal and wait two minutes. But likewise, you don't want it carrying on on the slow line and getting stuck behind another train, especially if it's only supposed to stop at a few places um, past Potter's Bar. So there is a lot of that, particularly Potter's Bar seems to be the place. There is one train in the morning, it's like 1B51, I think it is, which is like a parcel service. And that's a royal pain in the neck. You basically bring it up here, but it doesn't tell you because the platforms are not numbered at Potter's Bar. Really want to bring it into the slow line at Potter's Bar. It will then reverse to here. It will shunt into the up slow. And then once it's done, it will go back here, it will go into the up fast, and then it will go up to Welling. But those kind of trains are a pain because they obviously, if you put it in the wrong place, it stops here. It's then blocking a fast service while it's waiting to reverse. So um, there, every now and then you get a little spanner like that. Otherwise, uh, Welling Garden City works fairly easily. And a good number of services come out of the carriage sidings, but usually they'll go into platform four. To form the next service, the code should be changed automatically and then they just go out when they're, they're due to leave. Sometimes they join a train that's just arrived in Platform 4 as well. And occasionally you might get one that has to, say, come out of Platform 3 and reverse back into Platform 1 or 2. But again, fairly easy to work that, that out. There's not a lot of stuff um, go, going on here. But, um, but yeah, if you're sending trains from this side back into the carriage sidings, obviously you'll need to shunt them across back across the uh, the flyover. So other than that, relatively straightforward. You know, a lot of stuff happening, but mostly it's just the class two trains that stop at Welling. Most of the class one trains don't, but but a couple of them do. So then let's pop up to Hartford North. Hartford North is relatively easy to understand. You've got two through platforms and a bay platform. Be a bit careful here that these blocks uh, look like they're, you know, fairly close together. But actually a train can be stopped at Watton at Stone and it's still filling an entire block. It looks like it's about 10 metres away from Hartford North, but it might still be a couple of minutes away. So don't be too eager to set these routes uh, too far for up trains because you do get um, carriages coming out of the up sidings into platform one, two and three, depending on what they're doing. There aren't loads of them, but there are some. And if you start setting routes too far, then you're going to block the carriages coming out. If that train's stopping, I tend to prefer setting it to the, uh, the call on signal so that then you don't get the big long overlap at the end of it. So that's very straightforward. OR320R32 is going to the oil terminal at Watton at Stone. 
uh, fairly straightforward, normal um, kind of lever frame stuff. So obviously I t turn the auto off of the signal. When 0R gets to hear it, it will stop automatically. You then have to um, unlock the, uh, the lever frame by freeing it here with the free button and then bring up the lever, lever frame. And again, it's usual like release, facing point lock, change the signal, uh, you know, change the points here, change the crossover. And then you have to tick a box to hand signal um, the train in. If the train is coming from here, then you pull the lever to set the signal. But if they're coming from here, because there isn't a signal here, basically you hand signal it by ticking a box and then they go in. So it's fairly straightforward. And then there's not much to do kind of south of here. I've already mentioned Potter's Bar where there's lots of traffic um, turns around. But really, for the most part, this whole section here runs on auto. So most of the slow trains here will just go slow all the way up to Welling Garden City. And if you notice, they usually go into Platform 4. They might have stuff to do. In this case, it's joining uh, an empty coaching stock. And that's because we're obviously getting ready for the morning rush. So the uh, EMUs are starting to get doubled up. And the same kind of with the, the up trains, apart from the the random crossovers that happen mostly here, then a lot of the slow trains just go straight through on the slow line. Same with the fast lines. It, although there are lots of signals, the trains tend to cover this, you know, in probably seven or eight minutes. So it doesn't take very long. And likewise, in the Hartford Loop, there will be some trains with a G code in that will be scheduled to usually Platform 1 at Gordon Hill. And um, yeah, Gordon Hill has a train ready to start signals on the two bay platforms, but there aren't many of those. So you can mostly leave those lines autoed. Forgot to mention as well, sorry, no train ready to start at Welling Garden City, no train ready to start Hartford North. So be really careful because these things will sit there for a good few minutes and then they'll call you and then you go. oh, oh. So um, so, yeah, you need to keep an eye on that if you don't want to lose time. Then when we go further south, the next real kind of involved bit, bound screen depot is relatively straightforward. So you get some ECS movements come down the loop. So everything coming from up north into bound screen depot should be sent down the Hartford loop. And that's simply because it can go straight in very easily. If you sent a train down in this direction, then you, you're going to have a problem because you can't actually shunt across here, I don't believe, um, from this point you'd have to go into the reversing siding back over the flyover down the down slow all the rest of it so generally speaking that should never happen trains come down here for bounds green they just signal straight in there are i think i've seen one so far coming northbound it's not very common but comes northbound going up to biggles wade and again that will come out here go all the way up the loop and then join the main line up at stevenage and then you'll get a lot of services coming from Fern Park carriage sidings, which is basically where they park the HSTs at night. They often go through the carriage washer. Now, don't be too keen to signal them out the other end because they'll usually be in here for at least 10 or 20 minutes. Then, fortunately, there's a train ready to start indicator for when they're ready to come out, which is brilliant because it just saves you the anxiety. And once they do that, you signal them across here. Obviously, you'll have to turn this signal off, so uh, the auto button off, so the signal clears as it gets crossed. The train will stop here at the, the shunt signal. It usually waits a minute or two, and then you can signal from there straight into bound screen depot. There are probably a good 10 of those in the morning uh, as stuff comes through the carriage washer, ready to have its exam um, to, to come out to go down to King's Cross usually. So that's fairly straightforward. This is really, the, as you can see, the, the most complex part uh, of what's going on. But actually, you kind of get used to it quite quickly because most of the action in terms of the top half of this, most of the action is here, Bounds Green Depot South, and here, Hornsey EMU Depot South. So almost all of the trains coming into and out of Hornsey come out here and go in here. They're both bi-directional. It doesn't matter which one you use. And most of the trains that come out of Bounds Green come out of here. Occasionally, you'll get a service from Bounds Green Depot, say, uh, directly into the Hornsey Upsidings or even into Hornsey EMU Depot directly. There's like two of those. But generally speaking, these services will come out and they will either be going all the way to King's Cross, in which case they tend to follow the goods line all the way and then just go on the fast line down at Holloway South, which is just to the right of here. 
Uh, the other ones is some of these HSTs are due for, uh, to go to St Pancras. And so what they do is they come into the reversing siding. They go over the flyover into one of these. And then they once you've got the slot for Harringay Park Junction, they'll go through all the way from that signal all the way to that signal. And Harringay Park Junction is on the Gospel Lake to Barking Line. So that goes then to, I uh, keep forgetting what it's called, a junction near Upper Holloway that goes down onto the, the Midland Main Line there. So there are, I think, two or three uh, HSDs going there. And likewise, a lot of empty coaching stock will come up from King's Cross to signal 435 here, uh, which you need to make sure is cancelled down early enough into one of these reversing sidings over the flyover into the reversing siding and into the EMU depot. Uh, two things to note here. There are train ready to start um, signals on all three roads here. So all three of these can be used for reversing. Likewise, you've got two reversing sidings here, although that's the goods line. Sometimes there are two trains waiting to reverse. So rather than holding one at signal, you can park one here to reverse at 419 or you can use 421. Both of them can access the flyover and both of them can access both of these. That's so quite handy. And all five of those have train ready to start. So don't signal anything out of either end of the reverse sidings until you get that signal, because that's quite a slow maneuver anyway. And like with most things, if one of them says he's ready, but you've already set, you know, set a route across the other way. And, it's, you know, some of these will wait 10, 10 minutes or longer uh, to reverse. So just be mindful of that. Uh, obviously, it's only a single track flyover, so you can only do one train at a time anyway. So that's that. Uh, like I say, a little bit of stuff here, not very much. Most of the freight trains will need to go onto the up goods here. And that's because after this crossover here, uh, which we don't, I don't tend to use because it's easier just to leave these autoed. But after that, there's no uh, the next chance to get onto the goods line is after Finsbury Park Station. And a lot of the freight trains are booked for a through line stop, which means they will stop here even if the signal's green. Um, most of the time, it's only for a couple of minutes. It would be like a you know a crew change or something. But in some cases, especially if it's running early, that could be 10 minutes. You don't want it blocking up the, you know, the slow platform for 10 minutes, because if a service is coming up here, it can't cross over onto the fast at Finsbury Park. You would basically cause a log jam. So get those um, freight trains onto the goods line here. Even if they're going to King's Cross, that's fine. They can go over the goods line there towards King's Cross. But most of them will go around here to Canterbury Junction. Uh, which you will need a slot for. So, but the good lines off uh, the goods trains often come on the up slow, bang into there, and then straight down the goods line, which is nice. But like I say, a lot of these ECS movements, the HSTs will go on the goods line, and the main reason for that is they're often very early. So this my simulator is showing seven oh one, and this is not supposed to be at Finsbury Park until seven twenty four. But rather than holding it at the depot, it's easier to bring it all the way up to here or here. Uh, sorry, here or there on the goods line and just leave it parked up there. So then if another service needs to come out of the depot, that can come out as well. Most of these, the fast line pretty much um, goes straight through. But sometimes after Finsbury Park, some of the trains that stop on the fast platform two will cross back over to the slow uh, occasionally a slow train will cross into the fast but most of the time slow stays on the slow fast stays on the fast and then coming northbound again generally fast will stay on the fast all the way through I leave that signal off of auto and that's because of those 2R trains I mentioned earlier they actually start on the slow line to platform 4 at Finsbury Park and then they go directly onto the fast line so actually I leave that off of auto uh, otherwise most of the stuff is going straight through, so you can see a lot of stuff on auto. When the services come up here on the slow, you'll notice here you can't auto these, and that's because pretty much every other train is either up onto platform four, which it needs to go on to get up to the Hartford Loop, or it goes straight on to go to Welling Garden City. And there are a few services, mostly ones coming out of the sidings, that cross onto the fast line here at Alexandra Palace. So again, just a quick quick look at the timetable of the train will help you with that uh, 
I think with some of these, I think if you send them the wrong way, they would probably just go the wrong way. So if that's actually a Stevenage via Hartford train, and if I signalled it straight on, I think it would probably just, it, it might stop, but I think it might also just carry on as an alternative route. Fern Park carriage sidings south end is used for a lot of the, this is the 85 timetable, a lot of loco hauled stock, sleepers and motor rails. So you get quite a few loco hauled ECS trains come up from King's Cross after their night journey and they'll come up and most often they'll come up the down goods from King's Cross, down goods and the, the down, down slow line two and directly into Fern Park carriage sidings from the south. And then mostly we've got HSTs going around the Harringay curve but a very occasional freight train will come in this direction and will tend to uh, sometimes it will stop here for a bit so again be careful what you're blocking um, because some of these blocks will foul several of the of the junctions and then they'll obviously go whichever direction they need to go so that's all fairly straightforward this part here just takes some kind of regulation I mean it's not too difficult because by leaving those two signals off, basically the Moorgate trains come up here and they will almost always be booked to stop at platform six. And then from here, almost always will go into the slow line. And then at the same time, the, the trains from King's Cross that might be going to Hartford or Welling Garden City, they're going to come up the slow line to platform five. And then they're usually going to go on the slow line, sometimes go on the fast line. So just by leaving stuff here, you know, nothing's going to go the wrong way, but it does mean you have to keep popping your head back and working out whether, you know, this service from Moorgate is going to get there before that service from, from King's Cross. But in general, that's fairly straightforward. There's lots of kind of, it looks complex here, but there isn't a lot of freight here. Mostly that line is used for empty coaching stock, so it gets to Firm Park away from the main lines. And there's the occasional freight train. Notice the rather circuitous route from Canterbury Junction round here onto the down goods. There is one service in the morning that's double headed. It will stop here. The loco should be released and sent into platform six ideally. That then allows the freight train to continue on its merry way. The loco then goes back and you notice here that this is actually a bi-directional line. It goes back along the line it just came back round to Canterbury Tunnel and then goes back to Stratford. So there are Every now and then a couple of weird trains you just got to look at. Uh, that's mostly that. Holloway Junction then, Holloway North and South, is kind of your last chance to get trains onto the, the right side of the station. Now, one thing, like most of these stations, uh, is you, can, you note here that if you come in on the upslow, the furthest you can get is that part of Platform 1. Now, Platform 1, as you can see, the clue's kind of in the drawing. They've made it slightly useful. Platform 6 and Platform 1 are the longest platforms. But to get a full train in Platform 1, you have to come in via this signal. So if you bought that long train in via the up slow and tried to put it into Platform 1, basically it won't fit. And the little, um, I think that light might come on for the over length indicator. Either that or you're just going to end up blocking the throat of, of, that, um, of Platform 2 and 3. So just be mindful that some platforms you can get into and some you can't. Likewise, if you come in on the up fast, you can cross over here and you'd be able to get to platform nine, but you wouldn't be able to get to platform 10 and 11. So if you get these bits wrong, uh, you're going to have to use another platform. And as you might imagine, King's Cross, it's got 11 platforms here. It's got 12 in the modern era. It's not many platforms. Bear in mind, you've got a load of kind of express long distance stuff and a load of suburban stuff all at the same time. So there's a lot of times we've got two trains in the same platform. These are shorter. They can only take two four carriage multiple units. These are longer, but they're not all the same length. So like I say, platform six and one are the longest. You can see that platform two and three long enough for an eight carriage HST, but not much more than that. So you've got all the usual fun and games here. The nice thing is you've got quite a lot of flexibility. So all these four lines are bi-directional. So you'll find that if you're, say your train at platform one is here, then you're able to come out on this and then cross over to the fast uh, you could even cross over to the slow if you needed to. So you can pretty much get your way across anywhere, which is nice. You've also got all of these shunt positions here. 
So a lot of time, especially when you're shunting locos around, pull a loco out up onto one of these signals, back in again. And if you're moving a loco across, you know, platform one to platform 11, for instance, you might have to do it in two goes and it will be timetabled. So you might go into here, back into platform six, then from platform six to here and then down into 11. So there's some kind of fun and games, but mostly I found King's Cross is manageable because, again, you, it's kind of obvious what stuff's what stuff's doing. Uh, but just be careful um, when you're bringing trains in. If trains are early, you know, especially these empty coaching stop ones, they come down half an hour early and the platform's not even free. And then if you've brought it all the way to here, then you're potentially blocking uh, a service from departing. So uh, just, again, be mindful of that. I tend to leave them parked up here until their, their platform's available. That's mostly that. There's a couple of loco sidings, obviously only small enough for a couple of locos. There are a couple of moves where a loco's scheduled to go into here and wait. You can right click it, 17's to bottom, 19's to top. So they will be assigned that position in the timetable. And then the only other thing really about uh, King's Cross is this little link onto, this is the North London line as what, well, what was um, North Woolwich to Richmond and is now Stratford to Richmond and what happens here is you can send freight trains directly you have to click that you require the slot and obviously Camden Road signal box will give you the slot at some point and then you can send a train directly through there likewise they will send you a train through by asking for the slot you can give it and then notice that these two signals are your signals to control. So you have to set that to that and then that usually to here. And note that quite a few of these will reverse at Copenhagen tunnels. And that means they need to be signaled into here, into the down slow and then back often into King's Cross Goods Yard. Uh, the reason that's important, obviously, is usually only for a couple of minutes, it's going to block the down slow line. So if you have a service that needs to leave imminently, be very careful because as soon as you set this signal to that, the overlap goes right over into Copenhagen tunnels and the train will then block both of those blocks. So that won't get cancelled. If you then cancel it, you'll get approach locking on it. So just, yeah, be very afraid of that. But you'll also get stuff coming out of King's Cross Goods Yard. And again, it might go into Copenhagen tunnel and then back to Camden Road. There are a couple of things that come out of King's Cross, like motor rail and stuff. It might go up here and then reverse in. But again, most of that's fairly straightforward. And then the Moorgate branch is, you can leave it set to auto, which I generally do, which means as soon as you've sent a service here at Finsbury Park to that signal, you can mostly forget about it. And it will kind of do that a bit automatically, but just be careful that it, even though it has ACI, it doesn't always interpose the outgoing code. So that one's good, that's 2VO2. But sometimes a train comes in and for some reason it doesn't. Uh, you will get train ready to start signal for Moorgate. But if it's on auto, it will automatically set the route. But it might be a just an indication to you to go and double check that it's got the right code on it before it leaves. Otherwise, it'll be very confusing when you're, you're trying to direct it. So that's mostly that. The only other thing to note is one of the nice things is you don't have to call anybody to get permission for stuff. So all permission for fringes is via slot buttons, slot buttons there, slot buttons there. So you don't, on some simulations, you're calling to ask permission and it's a, a pain in the neck. But for the most part, like I say, it's, it's tons and tons of traffic. So that's definitely the one of the biggest challenges. Definitely one to uh, play with your friends if um you know if if you really want to give it a go especially if you want to do anything that has any kind of level of problems on it you know even on perfect mode it's hard enough with one person uh you can just about play it at normal speed but i suspect i'm gonna have to slow it down quite soon because it's starting to get um, a bit frantic but uh but otherwise it is is quite fun like i say once you you kind of learn where everything is. If you, you know, you see a sign saying something stopped at Welling, as you know, if you know immediately where Welling is, you're going to get there very quickly. If you're kind of going, oh no, where's Welling again? Like you tend to do when you first learn it, then it will probably seem impossible for a while. So, uh, but have fun with it. it. I know it's one of the simulations that people sometimes do online. It was the first one that uh, I took part in online and it was good fun because with you know three or four other people and with people kind of putting in a, a blocking the fast lines or something it gives you quite a lot to do 
But uh, yeah, hopefully that's enough information from me, enough talking. And yeah, crack it open, have a go, see what you think. Uh, any questions or comments, please just dump them below the video and I'll do my best to reply.